the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And you're all very welcome this afternoon to the funeral Mass for the late John O'Brien. I welcome his family and um, community and all those who are joining us online for this funeral Mass. John lived a long and full life and today we give thanks to God for that life and pray that God will be merciful to him. And as we begin our Mass now, some symbols representing John's interests will be brought uh, forward here to the altar and invite those who have those symbols now to, to bring them forward. So Matty brings rosy beads and healing oil. They represent John's strong faith and devotion. John was a minister of the Eucharist, a reader and a collector in the church here in Castle Lines. He was also involved in different prayer groups, such as the, such as St. Joseph's Young Priest Society and the pa St. Padre Pio Prayer Group. And uh, Judas brings the, the, yes, his credit union book. John um, gave long service to the credit union as credit controller in Formoy. He was also secretary of the Castle Lines Community Air Council. And uh, Ellen brings his phone book. John loved to keep in touch with his relatives and, and friends. And uh, Torin brings uh, newspaper and glasses representing John's interest in reading current affairs and local news. Thank you. <clears throat> so today we come before the Lord as we remember John. John, who was a husband, father, grandfather, brother, a neighbor, and faithful friend. John, above all, was a Christian who received the light of Christ at his baptism. We pray now that he shares fully in the light of the risen Christ. I welcome also Father Niels O'Donnell, who's consecrating this Mass today and who was a, um, a close friend of John's. And our heartfelt sympathy goes out to John's family, to Paul and his wife, Alfie, to Judith and her husband, Matty, her daughter, Ellen, and her sons, Torin, Jimmy, Paddy, and daughter, Maria, and to the extended members of John's family. As we commend John to God's mercy, we ask the Lord that he will grant him eternal life. We turn to the Lord now and ask his pardon and forgiveness. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you prepare a place for us and return to take us home. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promise that all who believe in you will never die. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant John, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated now, and the uh, scripture readings now will be read for us, so I invite the readers now to please come forward. <clears throat> A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all people a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil that is covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. 
the Lord God will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God, in whom we hope for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in, in the clouds together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. This is the word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples of Jesus were on their way to a village called Amos, seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking together about all that had happened. And as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked beside them, but something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, what matters were you discussing as you walk along? 
They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them called Cleopas answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things? he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people. And our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, let him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one who set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us that they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages of, throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it, and he handed it to them. And their eyes were opened, they recognized him, but he had vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. This afternoon we've come here to Castellines Church to be with the O'Brien family. We've come to pray for John and to commend him to the loving care of God, to his family, to Paul and Alfie, to Judith and Matty, to Ellen and Torin, Jimmy, Paddy and Maria, and the extended family. We express our deep sympathy and pray that God may console you at this time of loss. In the life journey of each person, a week seems to be a very short time. Even when we think of happy occasions, like uh, a week's holiday from everyday routine of school or going to work, a week passes very quickly. But this week, Holy Week, is a special time for all Christians. It is a week that inspires and supports us as we make our journey as Christians in the world. In the space of a week, the Christian community follows in the footsteps of our Lord and Saviour from his entry in triumph into Jerusalem, to his condemnation to a criminal's death on the cross, to his suffering and crucifixion, and then his rising in glory from the dead on Easter Sunday. And so great are the events of this one week, Holy Week, that he takes time to come to terms with them. One of the great texts from the Gospels that is read at Easter is the story of the Apostles on the road to Amos that we just heard a few moments ago. And in it, we hear how the disciples are struggling to come to terms with what is happening to Jesus during Holy Week. They are sad and, de and, de and dejected our own hope had been, they said, that he was the one who would set Israel free. And the disciples are so blinded by their sorrow and loss that they are unable to recognize the risen Christ. They couldn't imagine that the risen Christ um, would be close to them again. 
and but then as as they accompanied on the road his warm and loving presence slowly melted their grief and the painful message of what had happened on the hill of Calvary. And in that way, he brought peace back into their lives once more. In each one of our lives, the risen Lord accompanies us on our journey through life. Like the disciples, the risen Lord begins to speak to us. He speaks to us to the happenings of our lives. It's not so much to the good things that happen to us that we hear his voice. If we were, if we were to win the lottery, very few of us would think that God wanted us, uh, uh, wanted us to win the good things that happen to us. We often claim the whole credit for them ourselves. Oftentimes it is in times of difficulty when we are in trouble or perhaps we are very sick that we begin to open to the path of wisdom and through these happenings, we begin to see a deeper meaning to our lives. And in the Gospel, the risen Lord teaches his disciples that he had a plan for their lives. His plan was that he to suffer and die on the cross and rise again on the third day, so that we might all share in his life and friendship. His, me his message to us is one of hope. He's closed us in this life. He binds us all together in love, in a bond that can never be broken, not even by death itself. During his life, John experienced life in many different settings. In his native Skihin, and then for many years in Karn. In his work on the farm, John experienced plenty of challenges, especially in the early days, as uh, farm work was done in the old way without the benefits of modern machinery. But times changed and John adapted to the new ways of farming. He was happy in his work and he made his home in Corn, where, uh, um, where he met Ina and settled down and brought up their family there. You as a family of course will have your own very personal memories of John and these will endure. Outside of his family, he had a great interest in people and became involved in all kinds of groups and organizations. Up to the time of COVID, John was very involved in church affairs in Castle Lines as, Eucharist, as a Eucharistic minister and a collector at Sunday Mass. And he would arrive early for Mass and on Sundays and organize collectors to take up the collection that day. His faith was something very important to him, and over the years he was part of prayer groups, St. Joseph Young Priest Society. And outside of that, he was an active member of the Castle Lines Community Council and was on the board of the Credit Union in Formoy. John had a huge interest and huge appetite for current affairs, both national and local. He liked to keep up to date on all that was going on in the world. He joined Facebook, made a, made a success of it, and uh, uh, kept in touch with, with all the modern happenings. It is just three months since his brother, Father Joe, died. And John was very caring to him, especially when Father Joe's health began to decline when he retired. The people of Castellines, of course, will recall the white Volkswagen that John would take out on the roads in preparation for Father Joe's trips to Ireland. This white uh, Volkswagen, of course, is now a classic, and thankfully it is still in working order and in the capable hands of Judith. Our faith tells us that there is an eternal home waiting for us at the end of our earthly life. And this is the home that John wished for and waited for. Just as John had room in his life for God and the Christian way of life, so too Christ can welcome him into his kingdom. Today, while there is a lot of genuine sadness among us, it's not an occasion for us to give thanks to God for the good that John did in his life, and for the fact that his suffering has come to an end. 
We pray for John today because he needs our prayers, because like each one of us, he had to struggle as he followed the call of Christ. We pray that his faults and weaknesses may be forgiven him. It is our prayer that John now enjoys the peace and happiness for which he longed for throughout his life. May God reward him this day with his gift of peace and eternal happiness. Amen. We now come to the prayer of the faithful and I invite those making the prayers now to please come forward. God is close to all who call on him from their hearts. Let us now bring our many needs before him. We pray for John. In baptism, we has given pledge of eternal life. May he now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who mourn. May their tears be wiped away and their mourning be turned into joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are suffering with ill health at this time. May they experience the loving kindness of the Lord in and through who all, all who journey with them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the departed brothers and sisters. Today we pray for John's wife, Ina, his parents, James and Hannah, and his two brothers, Jimmy, and Father Joseph. May John be reunited with them in God's kingdom where there is no more pain or suffering. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all our deceased relatives and friends. May the Lord bring them into the light of his presence and give them a share in his glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Amen. So now the offer gifts now will be brought to the altar. Good morning. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, to pray the glory of his name, for all good and the good of all his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant John, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all who serve your people. Remember your servant John, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take we away the sins the of the world, mercy have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Take us your 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother John may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So, what a thanks to all of you for coming out today and taking part in this Mass and uh, showing your support to John's family at this time. Thank, thank, thanks also to those who did uh, readings and prayers of the faithful and who brought gifts to the altar here. Also, what a thanks to to Nessa and to Morris for the music, uh, uh, making it a very prayerful occasion uh, for all of us. And uh, after the burial uh, today, you're invited to join the family for some refreshments in Fermoy uh, Golf Club. Now we have the prayer of commendation. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother John. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul, present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother John in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon John in this life, they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and our brother John forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother John to his place of rest. Amen.
is 